All right, welcome to the Straight Red Card. And, uh, of course, we're going to be talking about Klinsman's uh, roster. And um, before we get to that, uh, and this is for the upcoming friendly. Uh, not friendly. God damn it. It's an actual oh, upcoming World Cup qualifier. Yes, we're already right. there, folks, um, against Jamaica. And um, this is for the 7th and the 11th of September. Yep, home and away. Yeah, but uh, what would you think about Pia Sunhag uh, retiring as the uh, <clears throat> manager for the U.S. women's team? It's only a matter of time, um, in my opinion. Uh, it's a shame to see her go, but yeah, you know, you know, uh, it's, it's time for her to uh, try something different. Uh, I read that she's going back to Sweden. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll see what she does. Maybe she's gonna try to take a challenge and uh, pick up. Uh, Maybe start working with the Sweden uh, women national team. Who knows? She's got to feel a little guilty about, you know, not helping out Sweden more. So maybe that's what she's going to go back and do. Possibly, yeah. But, you know, the great thing that she did more than anything else is she was a great manager of people. And yep. uh, when you have egos as big as Hope Solos on the team hmm. and you can manage that, then you're doing something right. Did you happen to catch Hope Solos' recent interview she did with, I don't even remember who it was, um, where she, you know, they they asked her about the, the you know. Chastain. Yeah, Chastain yeah. And, and the 99 team. And what'd she say? Well, you know, just because she scored a goal and ripped off her shirt doesn't make her qualified to be an announcer. Damn! Is that hardcore? Oh, man, yeah. What's going on with Hope, man? And then, you know, they talked, well, don't you have any... You know, uh, isn't it, isn't it important for you to have good connections with the you know the old old school team? No, why? Should, she's like, why should I? What's what's the point? It's about now, man. Now, woo! She certainly um, does speak her mind. I don't know if she. Well, you gotta love the big personalities. Um, you know, it's drawing attention, bringing attention to the uh, the women's game. Whether it's negative or positive, we'll leave it up to the well. Certainly negative fans. I mean, she basically told the '99 team to go screw off. <laughs> They're really not that important right now. But okay, uh, well, that's hope. Yeah. Um, well, she's uh, she you know, originally started off with her defending uh, defending her teammates. I believe that was her stance, and uh, I think it just escalated from there. I guess so. All right. Well, Dempsey to Tottenham finally happened on the like right before. He was about to turn into a pumpkin, right, basically. Hmm. He moved to uh, Tottenham, which, you know, might have been, I think, a step up if, say, Modric stayed. But then again, Dembele went to Tottenham, too. And Dembele and Dempsey, man, that that, that was quite a combo last season. Um, and yet they're going to get to continue playing with one another. I like the move. I actually do like it. I'm a little worried about their start of the season, but it is just the start of the season. The I think start they'll, of the season, They'll yeah. bounce back. Yeah. Uh, Klinsman was talking about the team, uh, the Tottenham team, in a uh, recent interview. Uh, basically, he was saying, you know, it's a it's a new manager. you got to give him time to take his take the players he brought in, take the original players that were already there, and, you know, they'll do fine, but, you know, they're – he basically, I think, pretty much basically said they're not, you know, they're not going to be contending for the top spot, but they'll still be a quality squad, and uh, hopefully Tottenham gives them uh, time to uh, time to adjust and time to uh, bring, you know, bring his game to the to the team in it, the league. There's really no reason they sh they couldn't be a top. I mean, no one's gonna no one's gonna replace Modric. All right, I mean that's not going to happen. But um, you know, it can be different. It can be a different type of team. And as long as Parker holds his own uh, in the midfield and, and everybody kind of steps up, uh, and Dembele, he's already shown he can he can score for Tottenham. He already did it. Um, I think this could be a pretty damn good team. All right, let's get to the lineup. Um, there were some omissions. Again, the one that stood out to me was no Timmy Chandler. Um but, again, you have Fabian Johnson, right? So maybe you really just don't. I mean, this is kind of Clinton's way of really sticking it to Chandler at this point. Um, well, I, you know, I'm thinking that uh, I'm thinking Klinsman talked to Chandler again and said, hey, do you want to come up? Or, you know, maybe maybe he's just waiting for Chandler to come to him. I'm not sure. Um, what we do know is we do know that uh, Klinsman has basically stated that, you know, he's got to make up his mind. Yeah. Um, and is it is it is it? 
is it correct that I, I had, and it's funny that I had actually looked at the roster and didn't even didn't even realize that Chandler was not on it. Wow. I've actually gotten to the point where I've been reading the rosters and I just don't even think that he's even an option. Wow. Um, so until until that day comes, uh, I'm not calculating him into any lineup or any roster. So I always I mean, look for him. But, I always look for him, and, and maybe it's just because I just watch him play this weekend um, for Nuremberg, and he just maybe. you know he played really well. Uh, of course, he played right back. Nope. No denying his talent, uh, and it's a shame, you know, that there goes some future depth, that, especially at right back. Um, but I thought one of the uh, one of the miss uh, calls, or you know, player that got maybe got snubbed a bit, uh, is uh, you look at Eric Lehigh. You know, he got he got some uh, minutes this uh, past weekend, mm-hmm. um, as did Guzan. Um, you know, maybe maybe you know Klinsman just hasn't called him up because this was his first match uh, of the season. But then again, that can be said about a lot of people. And then you have, uh, you know, players like Dempsey who haven't played yet, you know, and literally just got, you know, he missed all the preseason and just got uh, included with uh, Tottenham, like we mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of mm-hmm. curious why Lehigh hasn't really been called up. Well, um, yeah, I, I'm going to have to agree with you on that one in, in this way. <clears throat> You're Jonathan Spector. <clears throat> You're playing for Birmingham City in oh, the, the, second, the second division, right? Yet... You know, and you're playing. I'll give you that. You're playing, but it's second division, and there really wasn't a whole lot of interest from any first, you know, any EPL team to bring or to go get um, uh, Spectre and bring him back up. And yet, you're going to pass up Lehigh and bring another back in Jonathan Spectre. I, to me, yeah, I see that as kind of a an oversight. But you know, maybe. Spectre's playing really, really well for Birmingham, and I just don't know it. But I was under the impression that he started playing a lot more in the midfield rather than at the left or right back positions that he used to play uh, mm-hmm. when he played for Charlton and, and then West Ham. And now, of course, now he's in the second division. So I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Yeah. And I know the big, the big snub uh, on a lot of people's list is uh, no question. Well, again, you know, where do you? Where does he fit in? You can't play him on the wing, right? I think it's completely out of the position. Yeah, you're I mean, not going to play it, him at CAM behind Josie. That would be the spot you'd have to play him in. The be, be to have him stand a chance of being successful. That would be the position you'd have to if he's playing a four-five-one, or if you're playing a four-three-three, he can be one of the offensive-minded, uh, you know, midfielders in the triangle. Although, then again, to make a four-three-three work, that triangle have to work, you know. You know, with each other as far as covering spaces, go pushing up in the attack. You know, covering back for them, and um, I mean, it just it just depends. I mean, then again, he hasn't really had. A, I mean, he's had a couple call ups. I guess I don't want to be I don't want to be flamed for that. And he's actually had some playing time under Clash, or under uh, Klinsman, but I don't know. I don't know. You just keep you call, you're calling up Joe Corona again, and you're calling up Jose Torres, who has played as as Klinsman even mentioned one good game out of five over and over and over and over again so we can look forward to four more crummy games before he plays well again you're you're going to call that guy up and why not give question a chance you know he is performing he is playing uh in europe and he's doing a darn good job um but instead you know we've got listen you know i i know graham zuzzi has high potential i know there's a lot of potential there and i know that's why he keeps getting called up but you know what questions he's he made the move overseas and, he, and after not starting, he earned his way onto that team, and he's playing well. I think he's earned a call-up. Now, where do you play him? That's the mm-hmm. real problem. Maybe he has earned a call-up, but he just hasn't. He just doesn't fit into Klinsman's vision. That could be it. And that's where it ends for him. I mean, maybe that's it. He's screwed. Yeah. Um, and now I think the real interesting thing is you've got uh, Gomez and Altador on this particular they're both listed as forwards, and we know Clint Dempsey is too, but he's probably not going to play forward. He'll play like a either a reserved striker role or a CAM role. Uh, I don't think they'll play him out on the wings because he's, you know, not fit enough for that. Uh, at least you would think he isn't because he hasn't been playing any games, any real soccer. Um, but, you know, why not try Gomez out on the, you know, if you're going to play, a, uh, you know, a 4-5-1 or even, you know, because we all know that, Klinsman's four five one is the same thing as his four three three. You know, give Gomez a chance out on the right. Yeah, it's been like that with any any uh, manager of the U.S. team. Anytime we try to play a four three three, it just ends up looking like a four five one. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, and you know, this is the first time we're actually coming into a, uh, a camp, especially even a qualifier camp, where we have several striker options uh, that are on solid form. Yeah. I mean, you have Josie, who's leading leading his league in goals. Lighten it up. Uh, you have Boyd, who's actually scoring quite a bit. I mean, we already know Gomez is a, a proven commodity as far as putting, uh, putting in those goals. So, uh, I mean, this is a time where, um, you know, you look at the lineup and you're sitting there like, I actually would feel comfortable with playing four three three. You'd have, uh, you know, you have the options. Mind you, uh, you couldn't play Boyd and Josie at the same time in a four three three until it's in, towards the end of the game because neither Josie nor Boyd are truly like outside strikers that would cover back on on defensive roles by any means. But you have Gomez who does, who actually does play out wide um, as an outside striker, who could fill that role. I mean, whether or not you play Dempsey as the other option or you know. Maybe even bring in Shea because Shea filled that role uh, against the against Mexico in the original um, uh, Clemson Mexico match where we uh, ended up drawing one one. Yeah, um, I mean it's it's possible. There's a lot of options here for four three for an actual four three three. Whether or not it plays like a four three three, we'll have to see. But I do think the four five one is probably going to be the most that's will, about, will be probably most used. And here's the reason why they're going to use that. And it'll look a lot like a four four one one. I, I think that if you're 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 Klinsman, you know Dempsey's just coming back. You're not gonna have him play up and down that wing and run yeah. run all over the damn place. I think you play him tucked in behind Josie Altador and then uh, you have Shea on the left and Gomez on the right, maybe Williams again <laughs> on the right. And let's you know, I liked your idea, um, and we've talked about this before. How about giving Williams a shot at Beckerman's spot? playing next to jones it's crazy talk i don't like it crazy <laughs> well, no, yeah, that would make too much sense because that's the position he actually plays for his team Hoffenheim. yeah and you, you know we had mentioned we were talking about where dempsey will play but here's a question um with you know dempsey missing out on the preseason and just starting now you know could there be possibility where he doesn't actually play or actually start i mean could we look at a lineup with Dempsey on the bench? I think it's quite possible, and uh -huh. I think it might be very possible for one of the, at least one of the games, uh, seeing as we are playing, you know, back to back, uh, you know, against Jamaica. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I can see it, I can see it very possibly happening, especially in maybe the uh, the away match. And we you know, maybe mm -hmm. maybe Klinsman goes more defensive, and we see Williams on the wing, and you know, like we were talking about, a tr uh, an actual four five one, and Dempsey, you know, relaxing on the bench. Yeah. And coming I mean in as a sub. And, and he comes in the sub in the first game. In the second game, he on the 11th, he'll come in and start after, you know, uh, Klinsman thinks he's more fit. He, and let's say Dempsey doesn't start. You could play Gomez behind Josie, right? Yeah. And um, and, and just play that CAM slash uh, slacker striker role. Here's another Here's another idea. We could play an actual 4-4-2. Four, four, we could actually play with two strikers playing as two strikers. It could. You could do that. I mean, but that's not what Klinsman does. He likes one of the strikers to play more of a uh, yeah. sort of a receivership role and come back deep enough into uh, the half to not only help out on the CAM or the CMs uh, on defense, um, but also be a connecting point out of defense for either Jones or Beckerman, or it would be Bradley, but Bradley's not there. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it, it, there's no point in screwing around with a four four two, although we know we could win with that, so it wouldn't be, you know, well, we could see we could uh, see a uh, four five one with uh, Adu and uh, Beckerman playing more of a uh, alternating, like a uh, Beckerman as a six, um, and then see uh, Jones play more of a uh, more of a CAM in that matter. You know, we've seen him play higher up. We've seen him literally at some points get further ahead than uh, some of the strikers um, in the attack. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's a viable option as well. Well, that's one of those reasons they play that triangle quite a bit. It, it allows at least one of the midfielders in that triangle yeah. to break out. If, say, Beckerman gets possession, then Jones can make a mo can move forward, uh, and the other one can act as a connector. But, um, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be surprising to me, but I just don't see it happening.